Good evening, everyone. We'll call the meeting to order. Clerk, please call the roll. Howley. Yes. Hamas. Yes. Silvers. Yes. Boyer. Yes. Rivalinski. Yes. Rasmussen. Yes. Hamilton. Yes. Okay, thank you. We'd also like to start by welcoming our new city administrator, Kevin Flanagan, who is officially on the job. Kevin, welcome. I know you're, um, you've are gotten to know everyone on the council uh, quite well thus far. We're really looking forward to uh, working with you. And welcome to your first council meeting. Thank you. It's great to be here, and I look forward to working with everybody in the city and trying to get out and meet as many people as I can as quickly as possible. Okay, everybody. Just got the message. Paige, you're on it. <laughs> I look forward to getting out and meeting as many people as I can as soon as possible. Of course, you know, it's a short learning curve, but learning is what it's about. So thank you for having me. All right, we'll give that a test then, see if the, see if that's any better. Now, these aren't really designed as, as much to amplify within the room, so I guess we'll just ask everyone to speak up. So, We'll move to our uh, consent agenda before we do that. Um, are there any changes or additions? Uh, we will be um, uh, removing the resolution for uh, city employees. That's going to be reviewed now that uh, Kevin is here, so we'll take that up at our next meeting on June 25th. Uh, in that, we have the approval of the minutes from the May 29th meeting. We have liquor license approvals for Georgia's Steakhouse, Shokai Restaurant, Come and Go number 134. Uh, you have resolution for uh, hiring for Park and Rec Department. There are uh, several uh, additions for summer help in the uh, pool. And also a salary resolution for a new telecommunications operator, Cassie Manley at $13.67 per hour, and also claims in the amount of $691,616.41. Any questions regarding those consent agenda items? I have one question yes. uh, regarding the pool staff. Are we extending hours at the indoor pool? I was surprised how many uh, lifeguards we were hiring, so I just wanted a clarification on that. Yeah, it used to be, in the summertime, it was always closed in the afternoon because of the outdoor pool. Now it's going to be continued. Clear and I assume there will probably be more guards than there are right. normally at the pool because we'll expect more people. Right. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Anything else? Not an entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda? Move for approval. Moved by Revolinsky. Second. Second by Hamilton. Uh, please call the roll. Revolinsky. Yes. Hamilton? Yes. Silvers? Yes. Halley? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Hamas? Yes. Boyer? Uh, yes, but abstain on the minutes. Thank you. The council, we, the first um, uh, business that we have regarding uh, ordinances tonight is uh, approval of a uh, water rate adjustment. Now, we did this uh, several months ago and uh, the wrong rates were published. Uh, so essentially, this, is, this reflects the recommended 2% raise in the water rates, uh, which did go through the three readings and did pass. The published uh, amount for the charges uh, was incorrect. Uh, so we need to uh, do that again. Uh, since it has been through the three readings, my recommendation would be to pass it through uh, suspend the rules and pass it from the first to the third reading this evening uh, and get that done so that we can get the proper charges uh, for the water in place. I would move to suspend the rules. Okay. Move to suspend the rules by Hamilton. Second. Second by Revolinsky. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, the same sign. Now we'll uh, entertain a motion to approve from the, uh, th to the, from the third and final reading. Move to approve rate adjustment. Moved by Hamilton. Second. Second by Rasmussen. Any discussion? Not please call the roll. Hamilton? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Silvers? Yes. Revolinsky? Yes. Halley? Yes. Boyer? Yes. Hamas? Yes. Thank you. One Next. quick thing on that. Um, Darren, we talked about 
at some point maybe changing that rate structure <coughs> that where the, the more yeah, usage that'll is. That'll be it? that'll be in review in the future. Okay. Um, what we would like to see is instead of having a uh, sliding scale, having a single rate for water, but that entails doing a rate study as well as income study uh, to go along with it and then figure up what our actual production costs are and then base that off of the amount that we use. Okay. So it's going to take a little bit of time for that. Okay. Thank you. Next, we have the first reading coming to us for an ordinance regarding a change in utility connections and policy. And I'd just like to ask uh, someone from uh, the committee that reviewed this and is bringing it forward to explain to the council uh, the justification behind this. Um, yeah. This was something that uh, when we had taken up the uh, Sustainable Living Center on the university, there was a resolution at that point in time uh, for disconnection from an existing water service and that uh, not only is that against DNR policy but it it should also be at least a resolution stage here at the city and at the time we did not take that up and I went back through the records and found that we hadn't and really it should be part of our ordinance chapter 1120 which talks about uh, utility connections and what this is is just adding a section to the end of that chapter. Uh, it would be section 11.20.060 that says existing utility connections, existing utility connections, water, sewer made to properties located within the city limits requires said connections to remain in place unless just cause for disconnection to be shown to the utility provider for disconnection from service. Okay, essentially, that is the process that that building went through. Uh, we just didn't have it yes, in, within yes. within uh, code. The building was within 200 foot of sanitary sewer, and they were granted a waiver by resolution from having a direct connection to that sanitary sewer because of use of a new septic system. And we went through with the county sanitarium sanitarian laying that all out and along with that they have a new uh, filtration system for rainwater so they can have fresh water right. on site there and uh, the resolution for the water line should have been put in place at that time but as I said I found that it wasn't okay. and it really needs to be part of our code okay thank you Darren any questions for uh, Darren on that yeah I do have a question so this is regarding water as well as sewer than what you're water saying so well if someone sewer. decides to opt out of taking city water they have to show they just have cause. to show just cause yes they do i can see the sewer i i'm not exactly sure the rationale for the water well with the water you're billed for your sewer, sewer use through water usage so you would still have to have metering in your home on your sanitary sewer line to justify the use of the city's sewage facilities and there's no um, septic systems allowed in town except for variants uh, for universities and educational purposes yeah. so it's kind of a moot point yeah. that if if you don't have water at your home what are you going to do with your sewer you're still going to have to have it metered checked tracked and billed for um. I mean, I can conceive of, you know, if we, if you look at, say, like Eco Village, which is outside the city limits. It is outside the city but limits. But I can conceive of, in the future, as technology evolves, as people's preferences evolve. I still think uh, that well, the no, DNR overranks what we say as far as connection of water lines to homes and existing connections. I don't have a problem with that, but I, I, I'd like to just finish my thought here. Um, I. I agree with this as far as sewer, like you have to show just cause. In other words, you have to prove to us that whatever you're doing is better than, or it's safe and, and that the community agrees that this is appropriate, what you're doing, like we did with the university. So I agree with that part. Um, I understand what you're saying is we can't even bill for the sewer unless we have water, so let's just put it in the ordinance. That's, that's what you're saying. But I can conceive of the, of the possibility that someone might 
you know, have a system like they do in Eco Village, if they had a big yard or somehow they're collecting their water and they're treating it on site to, for actually use in their home, you know, to flush their toilets, to, to whatever, to water their lawn. And so we might want to think about at some point a separate charge for sewer than a separate charge for water. But I guess at that point, this ordinance wouldn't really preclude that. It just, it, uh, some, it, so I talked myself out of an objection. <laughs> <laughs> I was, was going to say, Councilman, I mean, if we're going to, if we're going to have an opt-out program, we should probably really vet that. We should look at it, look at the state code, state health code, um, distances as far as se certainly septic. Um, but I wouldn't recommend allowing folks to opt out of using the regime of city services if they're in the corporate limits of the city. This is you know, typically one of the things you do to offer people to come in on an execution level, for instance. I think if, if we're going to do it, we should we should probably look at it in comprehensive form. I mean, you know. Sure, but uh, the wording of this ordinance doesn't preclude that. It just says you have to make a case yeah. that we, that we right. buy. Sure. So, so that's me, sir, I've, I've been authorized to briefly interrupt you for just a moment. There's a lot um, of people out here who can't hear what's going on. Just a minute. Is there a, is the T, page, page? <clears throat> Is the TV is the TV on outside? Do we still have it? Can you just slide in the middle? We'll bring it in. No, that's where we don't have that. Can we, can we go up here? Yeah, come up here and sit on the floor. You guys all scoot up so you're not tripping over each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this crowd every week, so don't <laughs> 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 Okay, so while some of the others are are filling up in here. How are we doing? We got like mm -hmm. 10 or 12 anymore. Yeah, we should teach you how to do it. Your speakers are right here, your speakers are right here. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 okay. How are we doing? No. Okay. Okay, we'll continue. Uh, this is a this this is a public hearing. Also, I'd open on the um, open that to the floor. If there are any comments on the um, uh, sewer sewer and water connection proposal, yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay. What's that? Okay. So there, is there any public comment on the uh, on the on the ordinance that we are discussing at this time? The existing uh, utility connections, Chapter 11. Okay. Yes, could you come to the microphone, please, and uh, give us your name and address. And yeah, if if you're going to make public comment, please come to the microphone. I'm Beth Williams. Is that on? Not working. I'm Beth Williams. 2296 Walton Lake Drive. I was just asking a view of what John said and the fact that you had to do this a little bit retro because you didn't quite catch it in time. We're going to come to a time where a lot of us are going to have our own water. There's just no doubt about it. We're going to have our own water. Yeah. To the it isn't working, is it? Is it working now? It's not working. It's not working. I just think someday there's going to be a lot of people have their own water, so I just want y'all to kind of be thinking. Okay. That's all. Okay, thank you, Beth. Any other comments on this uh, reading? If not, we'll close the public hearing and ask the council is ready to move this from the uh, first to the second reading. I'd like to move it from the first to the second reading. Okay. Second. Moved by Hamilton, second by Hamas. Any other discussion? If not, please call the roll. Hamilton? Yes. Hamas? Yes. Boyer? Yes. Halley? Yes. Revelinsky? Yes. Silvers? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Okay, thank you. Next council will move to the second reading of our water meters opt-out program. And as, um, as was discussed at the, at the last meeting, this is an opportunity for those who have 
um, currently a radio re me uh, reading meter uh, in their homes to uh, allow for that to be uh, taken out and replaced uh, with a, um, a, a, me a meter that is not emitting the uh, radio frequencies. Um, there are proposed charges for that of um, $100 for replacement of the meter, uh, installation time of s at $75 an hour with a minimum of a half hour installation charge and a monthly fee for service of $10 uh, per month. Uh, now I know that's going to be the bulk of the discussion that we have tonight. Uh, but I just wanted to frame it for everyone. Uh, and this is the second reading. I just before we open up as a to the public for their public comments, uh, I just wanted to ask the uh, council if there. I, I know that Michael, your committee did meet in the meantime, but apparently there was uh, no uh, adjustment to to what was proposed in the initial no, our, ordinance. Our, our committee meeting was to talk about a long-term uh, metered. Yell. Yeah. Our committee meeting wasn't to discuss this topic. It was looking at a, a solution where the meters would be wired, wired meters, not wireless meters. So that's the phase two of the solution. This opt-out program is the short-term solution. The long-term solution is a wired meter option. So my committee meeting or my committee report isn't until later in the meeting, but simply that's the. Um, that's the, the bulk of the discussion that was had at our committee meeting. I have not. Good. I'm going to ask everyone to please listen as closely as they can. Everyone speak up as loudly as they can, but we can't have these kind of outbursts and interruptions. So just please, uh, let's do, everyone do the best we can. Yeah, so as the chair of the Environment Committee, I've not to date received any proposals for any change to this except for that the fee be zero. So we've got where it is now and zero. And I'm telling you, the truth is it's going to be somewhere in the middle. So just uh, if you're going to come up and say make it zero, I don't know if you're going to get a vote on that. But you can say it, obviously, but it's uh, not likely to be voted through. Those costs have to be covered by the people who choose it, not by everybody else. Before we go to the public hearings also, uh, Carl Chandler, our water superintendent, is here tonight. And maybe, Carl, what you could do is come up and, and explain how we've arrived at those charges and what you feel it means to, uh, to your department's budget. And since we don't have a microphone, it's fine that you stand there. Right. Is the mic working for FPAC? Everyone can hear. No. Basically, just, uh, no. the $100 that cost the new meter replaced the uh, what the standard is in the city right now, and uh, that being the radio read meter, that is the direction that we're moving. We've been working on it for over 10 years now, and we're still headed in that direction. <coughs> the part of the fee is a continuing fee, would be just, you know, cost the extra expense and time and trouble going up, walking up in front of everyone's house or side or back, wherever the meter's at, and encountering. Uh, uncertain dangers uh, throughout the year, walking through the yards and such, whether that be animals, uh, leaves, yeah. uh, We'll clear the room if there isn't respect for those who are speaking. Go ahead, Carl. So that's basically just by the cost of it there. The hourly rate, $75 an hour, that's just our set rate that's in the books already. Uh, that's what we're going on. Uh, we're not open on the public hearing yet. Just a minute, okay? Any other? Did we cover everything, Carl? Because I'm sorry you were interrupted there. I so we, we covered the, the monthly fees. Yeah. The, okay, very good. Uh, okay, comments from the council? John? I think, you know, as one of the committee members that we have tried very hard to sort of look at all sides, and I think that Michael has done a very good job chairing our committee, and we've heard lots of comments pro and con but I think the biggest thing is that we're trying very much to you know work with everyone and I think that was as I say one of the reasons that we did work with Carl in terms of the opt-out and you know it is I realize it's not something that everyone is going to be pleased about but it's kind of one of those things that I think in moving forward that we're needing to work together on this project Thank you. Any other comments from council? I, I have one. Um, Carl and I had a chance to uh, have a good conversation today 
and Carl, I, I had, we had discussed about some other option that might be possible for opt-out that's not presently in this ordinance. And one of them was that people could actually, if they wanted to pay for it, they could actually create, uh, what do you call it, a pit or a? Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, what I amount to there was, if, you know, we discussed what Michael was doing the committee, but that wasn't part of the topic of the committee. But if we wanted to install a meter pit uh, out by the sidewalk where the, you know, the stop box is that we're responsible for. So if you were to put a meter pit out there, uh, so it'd be the distance from the front of your house out to the meter pit away from your home. Uh, the meter would be removed from inside the home, would be out in the pit, and that way if it remained radio region, you know, there'd be no fee other than the, the cost of the installation of the meter pit. So that would be kind of a second option as well. Would that one be emitting radio frequency? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, I mean, the radio, it would still be the same radio meter that we're using now, but it would be removed from your home. It'd well, yeah. Whatever distance from the front of the house to the sidewalk or where the meter pits are located. I think meter pits are between $350 and $400 and a contract to install them. So. Car Carl and I also discussed this as well, and, and they don't have to be. They don't have to be ready. So anyway, the, the, there there would be different options of of the actual meters that were placed in the meter pit. So there there could still be an option not to have a radio frequency meter as well, and that would just make it uh, that would make it easier for the readers uh, to take care of at that point. Well, Any other? Uh, well, there was another another comment I had based on our discussion this afternoon, and and one of the many many emails that came around about all this, um, and that was this um, the idea that Michael sort of alluded to here, but the idea of having you know through the telephone service, and we had Carl and I had discussed the idea of right now our master plan for the water department is to have the radio meters everywhere, and that will be how it would be and then so if someone wanted to opt out of it uh carl's feeling was there there should be some additional fee because it's going against our master plan and it's more cumbersome in many ways but i was wondering instead of you know going backward to the you know going up to the house technology if it would be possible to look into at least the option for people who want to opt out to get one of those wired meters that go through their phone line if they have a landline that if, if uh, the homeowner supplied, say, a live phone junction box nearby the meter, um, if we could investigate the cost of what that would be. And then, in fact, it seems to me it would be moving, it would be even easier because you don't even have to go to the house. You just write from your station, you're getting a phone call that tells you the, the reading of the meter. I know it would require some additional equipment. There would be some expense involved, but it would probably be a lot less than say the $750 to put the radio meter by the curb and then it would be you wouldn't perhaps we wouldn't have we could justify not doing an additional monthly charge if we you know for those people because there's really even less work than than there is now so I would encourage you to investigate that and see if that'd be a possibility of something to add in to our opt-out uh, plan and then you know, and, and then, you know, it just gives an, an additional option to people who prefer not to have these radio meters. And John, that the committee is looking into that, and that really yes. goes under the category of long term. And the reason that we're in the second reading of this ordinance is because we're trying to meet the urgency that the right. community came to us with three or four weeks ago about creating an opt-out program immediately for people who just simply want it removed as quickly as possible. Right. So, the, so this proposal is based on that. The long-term solutions are something that Carl is both uh, committed to uh, and his department and the committee is committed to, the council is committed to. So we're going to continue to, to, to really investigate those and I think we're moving in the right direction. I think there are a lot of new solutions on the table, new information, a lot of that has come from the community and we really appreciate uh, what has been forwarded to us. So we will continue that, but again, the focus of this uh, ordinance tonight is for this immediate opt-out program 
uh, which would be in place regardless of, of a long-term solution. And yes, there would be adjust, adjustments made if we did make that type of a change. I wonder if we could put some language in the ordinance that so that every time we find a better solution, we don't have to pass another three readings to amend the ordinance. Um, what kind of wording would that be? I don't know. I, but and the other thing is, if we could actually, you know, we have two weeks before the final reading. I mean, maybe we could really do some yeah. very focused uh, research, and maybe even in that time, we could come up with a third option. Well, even I don't even in time for this ordinance. I think, as you mentioned, the the that idea of a master plan is in our ordinance. So any any change long term would have to be uh, an amendment, and that's okay. I mean, we're going fine. through this process again; it's fine, but. Again, um, there are people in the audience tonight who have meters in their homes. They want them out immediately, uh, and that's our discussion tonight, is uh, this, this phase of the opt-out program. Um, so. I would just like to comment that, you know, I came prepared to vote no and table just because I feel like we're not at a resolution point because our council chamber is full. That being said, and I still may vote, vote no, even though I can agree with the um, ordinance as is, and I liken it to um, if you want more protection, you have to pay a little more because that's your choice. When I go to the grocery store and I want organic food, I pay more vers versus something that may not be organic because I want that extra protection. Or if I want, you know, um, a higher... Um, health care life insurance plan I have to pay more for that so I kind of equate what the um, what Carl and the committee has prepared um, I can get on board with it however I guess it would be nice um, that after tonight that I if if we could hear from you again for those that really want this to be immediate so it's a short-term solution while we're working on longer term solutions that's okay with me uh, but also I can also say hey we're not quite ready as a community to settle on this and that we need more work and more work from you to work with the committee to come up with a resolution that's um, better saluted, uh, situated for our community you know the council and the committee has um, or in the water department certainly has um, recommendations and laws to meet from the DNR that also are coming at us from another direction that are playing into this into these decisions and I doubt if we're going to change DNR in the next month or two and get total local control um, that's not going to happen so we have to balance what they're uh, telling us what we have to do and also want to balance what our community wants and so that's kind of where we're at Thank you. Any other comments? I think I would add to that that, I mean, the, the basis of this is efficiency in the water utility. That's the basis of it. Um, there's ample evidence out there about radio read and all these other technologies there. We, we are limited on, uh, you know, fiber to homes, and that's going to limit what you can do on some of the alternate technologies. But Carl and I have had some preliminary discussions about putting together, you know, putting this all together whether it, we can present it to council in a, in a public meeting where everyone can comment on some of these different options and really get a good conversation going, but to, to shoot out in lots of different kinds of directions with lots of different kinds of approaches and technologies in, its, in, in itself is not going to be more efficient and is, is going to be a burden on the taxpayer that really is not, you know, not worth doing. There, there, there should be options. I, I agree with that, and I think that's a good idea for us to provide that in, in any utility or any service we provide we should provide options you know that are reasonable that meet some continuity you know that uh, that aren't uh, uh, one size fits all but um, we're gonna need a little time to do that and I, th I think the mayor's right in directing this tonight to what we're here for but we're gonna need a little time to put together what this is because there's a lot of these things a lot of different kinds of technologies and approaches that, that communities use we're limited in fiber fiber is not to every home so some of these things are a little more advantageous using, you know, fiber optic connections. So I think we're just going to need a little time, and that's what I would caution this, both citizen and council is, is that we're working as, as hard as fast as we can uh, to get that done. Okay. I'd Thank like to make a comment as well. We'll be opening up for public in just a minute, just as soon as I finish with the council's comments. Yes, go ahead. One Mayor. thing that comes to my mind, and I see it in the crowd that sits in here tonight, 
once an opt-out option is passed, whatever form that takes, people are going to need to remember that we don't have staff to immediately replace radio meters in all of your homes all at once. It's going to be needed to be done on a first come, first serve type basis. And if that is creating a list in the water office and then going out and doing things from that point, we need to be able to have that to do. Uh, we also have a whole myriad of other things that go on with our water distribution system that our forces have to, to have to take into consideration and keep on top of. We're replacing water meters right now, or water lines right now in, in the city, and our forces are doing that work. Other lines are being inspected by our forces out there. So whatever happens at the end of this opt-out, we still have to be reasonable enough to understand that we can only do so many at a time. So I don't want anybody to get the idea that if we pass an opt-out at the end of this month, we're going to be at your door the next day ready to change out your meter. It just is not going to happen. So I'm going to ask for some patience from people along those lines. Okay, thank you, Darren. So I know the public has waited long enough. We'll open it now for public comments. And since our microphone is not working, uh, I'll just ask people to stand uh, in place. Now, the, the other thing, too, is we have a lot of people in the room, and everyone has the right to speak. But if someone else has made your point, um, please, in the, in the interest of time, uh, just go ahead and move on. So uh, we'll start uh, right here, right? And if you'll stand up and uh, give us your name and address. Uh, Brian Kelly. <laughs> Brian Kelly with the asleep foot. Uh, 1960 South Fire Lane in North Campus. And I'm listening to the arguments. And Connie, your argument is very sanguine. But the point is, I have a meter in my home, and I was never given the choice. So I didn't walk into the grocery store, and there's the you know, the RF meter, and here's the wired meter, and here's the one that I can, somebody push it or reads at my house. I just got it, I didn't know about it. Somebody in our division actually has the pit, and that costs $600, $700. So my feeling is to the point of this issue about whether we should pay for the opt-out, I don't think I should pay anything because I was never given a choice. Somehow the city or the, you know, all of us in terms of taxpayers should pay us folks who have this meter and didn't know about it. And it's not a matter of organic and, you know, non-organic food here. We're talking about a controversial uh, device, or at least the emissions from this device that have been banned in several cities in the U.S and that now states are looking at it. Vermont has an opt-out that's zero payment by the people that were affected. So um, that's my point. I think it should be zero for those of us who have it. It's been installed and we don't know, and we didn't know anything about it. And I think it's as controversial, if not more controversial, than cell phones because the emission is stronger. That's debatable, but but well, that's fine. Well, there's lots of interest, but the yeah. point is, okay, I will shut up in a minute, but the point is that it's controversial. Mm -hmm. We don't know. There's a lot of science in Europe, and you're usually there ahead of us than here in the U.S. Uh, you can look at several examples on that, but there is solid evidence that there is an issue. There. Okay, thank you, Brian. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yes. Hi, right. thanks. Um, just a quick comment specifically about the opt-out program. Name and address. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, Jennifer Diamond, Taylor Avenue, West Taylor Avenue. Um, about the opt-out program, the cost of the meter, um, I'd like to second what Brian said, that there really are two categories of people for, you know, about the opt-out program. One is the category of people that received the meter already and didn't know about it, and so didn't have a choice. 
And so I don't think they should be paying the cost for the opt-out meter since they never had the choice in the first, were able to make the cho informed and were able to make the choice in the first place. Then the second category is the people that will opt out in the future. That is, you know, when this, the, when it's, their old meter breaks down and it's time for a new one and they'll be given that choice. And the thing is that the, my understanding is that the quote opt out meter is approximately a hundred dollars, whereas the uh, wireless RF Neptune meters around $240. So it just doesn't make sense for the people that may opt out in the future um, for them to be paying $100 for a, you know, for that meter, which is, you know, less than half the cost of the new meter. So, okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. My name's John Brown. My address is 1501 Wonder Way. And I've been asked to present a survey of the experiences in other parts of the country who got meters a lot earlier than we have here. And therefore, and therefore they have experiences that perhaps we could benefit from rather than having to go through the same uncomfortable uh, situations, which we're just beginning to experience now. Uh, and then I know there are many people in the audience who want to s give specific angles. But if I could just go through. John, are they, uh, are they relevant to opting out? They are specifically out? about opting out. out and the fees. Yeah. On May 15th, the legislature in Vermont passed a bill that allows a customer to choose not to have a wireless meter at no additional cost. And if there is already a meter in place, the customer will not be charged to use it. This recent state legislation eliminating opt-out charges resulted in a noticeable spike in the choice of the uh, meter rejection. Now, that's actually something that's been a growing trend for the past month or two. That is an entire state, the state of Vermont. There are many cities around the country that have been responding to this. And on a state level, Illinois and Connecticut, for example, the attorney generals directed wide-scale cost-benefit analysis and they determined that there's absolutely no benefit whatsoever to the consumers for these meters. And therefore, uh, in Illinois, the regulators on Tuesday rejected a Maryland, <coughs> Illinois $625 million plan to deploy smart grid improvements in their service territory, saying that the company not only failed to show it could deliver a cost-benefit to customers, but that the deployment plan was vague and incomplete and bordered on being a general statement of intention. Now, uh, the Attorney General of uh, Connecticut made the same assessment as the Attorney General of Illinois, that there are no cost benefits whatever for the customers of the wireless meters. Now, uh, in California, where there have been so many meters installed and have been in place for many years, there are many individual governments who have made similar decisions. Here's a new story on June 5th regarding the city council and residents of Ojai, who just passed legislation calling for a moratorium on installation of these wireless meters. And they uh, in this moratorium, it is now a, misde a misdemeanor if any of these wireless meters are installed without the knowledge or consent of the consumers. Uh, the story in Ojai uh, mentioned other local governments in California which have followed the same policy as Santa Cruz, Marin, Lake, and Mendocino counties who followed through on their legal right and moral obligation to pass laws protecting the residents from a utility industry 
and regulatory environment out of touch with the health, safety, and sanity. Uh, the Ojai City Council voted unanimous, unanimously in favor of the urgent ordinance, which does not require a second reading and goes into effect immediately. So that's the response in California. There are other states with cities following the same lead. Ashland City Council in Oregon has approved an opt-out option for residents who don't want radio frequency wave emitting utility meters in their homes with no opt-out fees. The council adopted the opt-out policy on Tuesday night and directed city staff to no longer charge any proposed fees of $120 for an opt-out, nor the proposed monthly fee for homes that do not have the wireless meters. Uh, now, uh, just very, very recently, June 7th, in California, the ability of utilities to charge a fee who refuse, uh, to customers who refuse a meter was dealt a serious blow as the opt-out fees for customers of Southern California Edison have been placed on hold pending review of the California Public Utilities Commission determination of whether the fees are in fact legal or not. So essentially, uh, there, there is a growing recognition of the problems with legalities and constitutional issues and other, other factors that are prompting, uh, and also the experience with the meters. In Dallas, Texas, there's a lawsuit now by the city of Dallas on Neptune technology, the maker of our meters. And that lawsuit is based on the fact that out of 57,000 meters installed, 40,000 or 70% of the meters failed well short of their 10-year warranty. But what is even worse is that Neptune is not standing behind its product. It's not honoring its warranty. And therefore, Dallas is suing for $3,500,000. And it is on this basis that the Fairfield Citizens for Safe Utility Meters is questioning the wisdom of committing to an investment of more than three quarters of a million dollars expenditure of city money uh, without uh, or in cognizance of the company that's being dealt with, Neptune itself. And furthermore, with the cognizance that the consensus uh, by attorneys, commissions, committees around the country is growing, that there is no benefit for the consumers. That's what is so perplexing about the whole dilemma that we're all facing. Uh, and this is on the basis of very extensive, sophisticated cost analysis studies that have motivated entire states to call a halt to the rollout. Uh, so uh, on the basis of this growing evidence around the country and the recognition of problems with, in terms of health risks, and I, I would certainly, you know, I, I'm not going to go into that because I haven't been asked to do that, but if people have further evidence, we, we know about the 6,000 studies that have been published that, you know, are, are giving a very strong indica uh, indication of at least potential risk. And the Fairfield Citizens for Safe Utility me uh, Meters is simply urging that it is not a matter of proving something is lethal or deadly. It is a matter of, if anything, err on the side of safety, the precautionary principle. And <laughs> And simply on the basis of that perspective, in terms of the short term, the purpose of this meeting, that the Fairfield Citizens for Safe Utility Meters does not feel that it is warranted, justifiable in any way, to charge a fee for those who simply want to protect their health and do not want to be harmed, so they have to pay to avoid being harmed. And that is so. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate mm. the council hearing the position you, of Fairfield Safety. Appreciate it.
Uh, Joe in the back. You're going to be looking for. And I've got three quick points. First point is titled Unity and Diversity. Second point is titled Aluminum Sheeting. And the third point is a suggestion on how the city is, in fact, not um, losing too much money from replacement of the meters. So unity and diversity is that this isn't just a meter issue. This is a wonderful exercise about community building and how both our elected officials and our citizenry can come together and learn to work together to face all the challenges that we're going to continue to face in the coming years. And so we've already in Fairfield seen the city come together and build a new library and a Fairfield Arts and Convention Center that is totally remarkable for a city of our size. And what I'm proposing is that this is just one more situation where we can all work together and not create an adversarial situation, but create a neighborly situation. And I believe we will find a very good solution. <coughs> the second point is uh, aluminum sheeting, and that is a friend of mine uh, put a uh, aluminum cookie sheet uh, behind the meter on the inside of his house and then tested the uh, radiation and he was able to protect himself with a very inexpensive homemade solution. And the third point is that when you consider that the RF meter that's in the house is possibly usable again, let's say in a rural environment where it might be appropriate to use RF meters where there's no, there's not a lot of density of uh, human habitation, so an RF meter may actually be useful there, then the city isn't actually losing that $240 meter, it's just going to put it someplace else and replace it with a lower cost $91 meter. So in fact, the city isn't uh, going to be spending money, but it's actually going to be saving money because it's going to continue to have the RF meter for an appropriate location. And instead of replacing the RF meter with another $240 meter, it's replacing it with a $91 meter. And it would have to replace meters anyway because this is the program of the city to continue to replace broken meters. So it's actually not that much of a loss for the city. Thank you for your comments. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Marsha Ann Roth, 201 South Mabel. Um, I have no idea on the health benefits, but my mother is a senior citizen. She is on a stable income and looking at $257 to opt out on a system, we have no idea what we have. Right. That we are going to have to opt out or not, we have not been informed one way or the other. That's my first point. We have not been given the knowledge and consent ability. Um, as far as the dollar, on the RF emitting uh, water meters. I have friends east of us that sent me an email and they said, for God's sake, opt out. These meters are no good. They're full of problems. Electrical storms can mess up the settings. They run much faster and require you to supply the power to run the <clears throat> at your own cost. <laughs> One of the neighbors went through this. He was very upset. A $30 to $35 water bill went to a $54 bill the first month, $63 the second month, $66 the third month. He got the city to put him back on the old style, and now his bill is back down to just under $35. He also noticed that his electric bill had gone down to 19 or had gone down $19 in electrical costs. You're looking at a lot of cost that most people have no clue what system they're on, whether they even want to opt out or not or whether they need to opt out. And here's $257 that goes 
out of our pockets. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good. 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 I just want to clarify something. Carl, these meters aren't hooked up to anyone's electricity, are they? These meters are not hooked up to your electricity. They run on a battery, a one watt battery. So his electricity bill had nothing to do with his meter. They're not he connected. He evidently had opted to have direct wire, but it is clicking all the time. There is no all direct wire on anything that the city's putting in, in with these meters. In, in that city. town, it might be the case, but not in Fairfield. Just to clarify. Okay. Mayor, I'd like to address the, the point that our council member made earlier about uh, what state, are we going to do you state immediately. Your, would you state your Bob, name and address, My please? name is Bob Stone. My address is 602 South 6th Street. Okay. And I feel that the appropriate thing to do would be to turn off any of these wireless meters that the people feel concerned about and simply charge them what their average monthly bill has been in the past until the whole thing can get resolved. Thank you. Steve. Stephen Drucker, 54 North Park Street. I'm a public interest attorney. I'd like to follow up on John's point about precautionary principle because this is something very important that all of us need to be aware of. These are additives to our home environments. If these were additives to our food, by law, by federal law, they would all have to be proven safe by standard testing. They could not be on the market just by people using hypothetical reasoning to say, well, because of this and this, then we think they're safe. That won't cut the mustard. And the FDA has successfully challenged many additives that had expert witnesses with many affidavits claiming as a standard bit of, of scientific reasoning, we can presume these foods will be safe based on this, this, and this. And the FDA has only had to present a couple affidavits from experts saying, we haven't seen any solid evidence demonstrating that these ad additives are safe for their intended use. And the courts have always upheld the FDA in every case that I've seen. And I've read a lot about this. So this is very important to understand that there is Fairfield, if Fairfield wanted to actually consider the biggest opt-out, which is opting out of the program that has been implemented so far, and really reassessing, as many people have suggested, the whole thing, and understanding that there is no evidence of safety. It is a risk. It is a risk. And I know that there are many people can cite scientists on one side saying that, uh, you know, there's nothing to really worry about. In fact, just this afternoon, I downloaded the most recent white paper from Neptune's website, copyright 2012, so it's up to date. And I looked at the health, the health safety section. I did not find one citation to any study any feeding study, well, I'm sorry, feeding study would be a food additive. <laughs> any study where living organisms were subjected to this kind of pulse res uh, radiation day in and day out to see what the effects were on the animals and on the next generations, nothing. What they had was hypothetical reasoning from other, from, from experts. In contrast, we know that there are many experts with just as good credentials as the experts on the other side that have issued warnings. In fact, just one, and I'm sure Richard Wolf Wolfson, if he speaks, and others will go into it in more detail than I will now, but the American Academy of Environmental Medicine in a 2012 report warned actually, and, and these, this is a, uh, a group of physicians, very well respected medical doctors, <laughs> They cautioned against all radio frequency technologies, but they especially cautioned against smart meters. In, in other words, when people are saying, we know many people are saying, look, people use cell phones, people use Wi-Fi, so big deal. They're saying this, there is special reason even compared to these technologies to be concerned about smart meters. Another important point is that many of us 
avoid Wi-Fi systems in our homes. We pay extra for hard wiring. We avoid using cell phones unnecessarily, or if we do, we're very careful. I don't use them at all. Yeah. And, uh, the, the longer we're in this public so hearing, can, the more danger we're all in. <laughs> I want to just say something else I found on that same paper from the Neptune site. It said it would be un unfair to make people who have embraced the technology and they used to embrace pay for the costs, extra costs on the system of those who don't want to participate. But I think as so many people have spoken tonight have already made clear, and as I think everybody in the council should understand, our community has not embraced this technology. Most people have not been informed about it. There has not been a fair and open discussion of the pros and the cons. And I really feel that in that case, it is not fair to impose the costs. Just to get back to the analogy of food additives, and then I'll sit down. You should be grateful I'm giving you good legal advice and not charging a cent. <laughs> <laughs> if these additives to our home environments actually were additives to our food supply, A, not only would they have been, had to have been demonstrated safe, but any citizens who still felt, for one reason or another, that, he, that they would like to opt out could easily do so without any extra expense because they would have to be labeled. The package would clearly state the presence of that ingredient, and all concerned consumers would have to do is opt not to buy, not to pay money. This is a very different situation. A potentially risky technology is being imposed on a whole community without their prior consent, without their real understanding, and in order to opt out, one has to shell out. And that's not fair. Thank you. My name's Susan Hirschman, and I live at 806 South 2nd Street, and I may, may be the only one here tonight that feels this way. It doesn't work. We can hear, you know, uh, I'm Susan. I'm trying. Uh, yeah. Susan, yeah, we can hear you probably a little better up here, so you can, you can face okay, the crowd. Okay, well, I'll do my best. I may be the only one here that feels this way tonight, but here goes. Um, I do not support uh, the petition that I unfortunately signed a few weeks ago. I feel there was a lot of disinformation in it. I feel it was um, passed around on the internet and on Facebook and probably other places way too soon. Um, there were a lot of, uh, uh, you know, there were a lot of things in it that I've since found out are not the case. Um, I've heard a lot of uh, what seemed to be scare stories and phantom symptoms and, you know, I got one email that I'm sure other people got you know, comparing the people who were putting the water meters into the Nazis. Yeah. Is this really supposed to um, convince people that, you know, that they're bad? Um, it, it sounded to me like, you know, there's been a lot of mania whipped up, and I, I'm really disillusioned about the way this has been handled, um, unfortunately, in our town, and I think it could have been handled better. I think that petition was, to some degree, somewhat deceptive in that it came out before, you know, only presenting one side, and I really wish it hadn't been done that way. Um, I just want to say that not everybody here tonight feels that what the council is doing and the city is doing is wrong. I don't. I think that you guys have done, it seems like, a lot of homework and a lot of good, uh, there, I've heard a lot of good facts for these, and I've heard some against them, and, and there's, that's why there's the opt-out. And if you want to opt-out, um, you know, you can do that. But, um, you know, to, to think, to say that, 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 you know, the city would put these in, putting everyone's health at risk, is to me, uh, crazy it's nuts and I don't you know I don't understand why people why people have to go to that length in order to make their point so thank you yeah. thank yes. you for the applause thank you yes and uh, a nice comment. So we're making sure that comments are new comments yes Alan Craiglow I live at 1001 Oakwood Boulevard uh, I'd like to agree with the last speaker on one point, that it seems to me that for the city to put these meters into everyone's homes, thereby endangering everyone's health, is nuts. <laughs> yeah, that point has been made so Okay, times. now, the, the, the <laughs> other, the, I have a question. I don't know the answer to this. 
Um, my understanding is that a, a major reason for doing, for, for this whole thing is to save one uh, meter reader's salary. And I'd like to know, you know, roughly, do we have a, an estimate of what that salary is likely to be? Because it seems to me that the extra cost of these smart meters is supposed to justify, be justified by this one meter reader's salary. How much is that, may I ask? Carl, can you ad ad answer that for him? Well, I'm not exactly understanding, I guess, where that came from, one meter reader's salary. Right? Well, the, the idea was that, that, that it, it, yeah. currently they had, have to pay two, and then if they put in these smart meters, they will only have to pay one. That was my understanding. If that's not accurate, I'm sorry. Well, that, I mean, when they're not reading meters, they're busy doing a venue of other things going on. A meter reader doesn't read full time. Now. Well, are you saying then that and we have reduced by one meter reader? So, are you saying that the 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 idea that the city will save money by not having to employ a meter reader if these Neptune uh, smart meters are installed is actually not even true? No, what he's saying is that it, is that it's an attempt to seek efficiency in the provision of the public service so that that employee that employee can do something else that is helping the taxpayer. I think the one comment from the one citizen, we're doing this to try to, to, to use a technology that is more used than it is not used. I mean, radio, this stuff is not new tech. This has been around a long time. I mean, Hedy Lamar died not too long ago. Hedy Lamar, the actress, you know, early, early in the 19th century, Hedy came up with the technology for Wi-Fi, wireless radio technology frequency. You know, helped come up with it with a friend of hers. I mean, this stuff has been around since the 20s and 30s. Um, the technology this is based on, the technology it's based on, and radio reads are not new tech for meter reading. They're not. This is almost what most people are doing. So, well, the, my my we, question is, my question comes down. I just down, wanted to say my, that we were doing it to try to benefit the citizen, and right. no one from the city government would want to harm you our citizens. You want the benefit that you want to give us? <laughs> no, my, and, I, and I, I, I'm hearing you. I think Carl's hearing you. There'll be right. no outbursts. We're, we're all. You'll be you'll be asked to you'll be asked to leave the room. So, so, so my, we're, we're my, having, this this discussion is going quite well. Just everyone, just wait their turn, please. Thank um, you. My, my, my point is, I think. Oh, go ahead. I, I hear you, and I I understand the principle. And it's not necessary that you would have to fire somebody in order to save money. I get that. No, not fire. We're not firing that person. We're using that person to do something Whatever. Else. It's not necessary to lose somebody in order to save money. But my question is, how much saving are you thinking that there would be against, and I, I, I got this uh, figure from something that was uh, sent to me in an email, that this, this whole program is going to cost Five hundred thousand more for the uh, the the, the uh, these smart meters than for the uh, meter that would otherwise be the opt-out meter, and I'm I'm wondering. Yeah. It seems like it, it'd be an awfully long payout on that investment. Well, over the long term, the idea is to seek efficiency in everything that we do. We want to. You know, we want to make the best use of the of the workers that we have. We have a water department. Well, th that's not the point. The point right. is, okay, if yeah. if you if there's more efficiency to be had, if it's a five hundred thousand dollar investment to do the smart meters over and above what the opt out meter would be, how in the world do you expect to recoup that investment through the efficiency? I'm not I'm not I'm not questioning that. I'm asking. I'm not sure about that $500,000 number, number one. I, I don't know what the maximum number after every home is done and every business is done is at this moment. But I can tell you that we don't do anything in, in our service provision that isn't trying to make the best use of the tax dollar. That's what Radio Reads is all about. And it, it is more efficient and it does save tax dollars. Yeah. That is proof. Alan, it's not fair to everyone else who wants to speak to, That's to continue fine. the debate. Because I, I, I think you, this, the, the answer is basically for efficiency. So that, that's, that is the answer. There's another yeah, answer, and that is I don't know. That's what I heard. <laughs> okay, thank you. So uh, I just have three very simple points. Name um, and, and address, please, Catherine. Catherine Saranduke, 502 West Carpenter. Thank you. And I have three simple points. The first is that there's a letter in the back. I think it's back there from Chris, uh, what's his last name? Johnson. Chris Johnson, who says his bill was $1,000 for water last month. Usually it's 100 And uh, my point is that I've had interactions with the water company where my bill is 
like $30 higher or $40 higher, and I can't prove why it's higher. It just is, and I have to pay. Now, with these meters, it's notoriously known with RF meters, with wireless meters, that the bills are off. There's CNN articles about it. There's all kinds of public publications about that. If your bill is not $1,000 off, but let's say it's 20 and 30 off every month, how are you going to prove that? You can't prove it. You're stuck with it. So um, there's that point. And then there's another point, which is that Michael Haley has said that if anyone can come up with proof that they had a medical problem as a result of these meters, that he'll take all the meters out. So I would just like to give that proof today. And um, I don't have a heart condition. I don't go around with a doctor. But I entered somebody's home. Her name was Sue Berkey a year ago. And uh, sh she had just built a new home. And I just went over there to see the, 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 the place. And it was very nice. And I was sitting there. And I said, do you have some really powerful Wi-Fi device that I'm sitting on or something? And she said, no, I have no Wi-Fi in my house. And I said, yeah, you do. She said, no, I don't. And I started to like break out in a sweat. I got nauseous. My heart started beating really hard. And I said, I've got to go. you know." And uh, she said, you know what? The water company just installed this meter. And I said, where is it? And she said, well, it's, 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 in the, it's right in the next room. And as we walked towards it, my heart just was beating harder and harder and harder. By the time I got to the meter, I really felt like I was going <laughs> to you know, have something go wrong. And I left her house, and I didn't think about it anymore. It had a little, uh, little tower on it, little antenna on it. And uh, so I realized that it was rather like a tiny little mini cell phone. And I didn't think about it um, until about seven months later when myself and a friend who's in the room went back to her house to see what kind of meter it was. And I walked in, and the exact same thing happened. I got heart palpitations, nausea. And I, you know, I don't have a heart condition. And I don't travel with a doctor, so I can't prove it. But I had a, two witnesses there. and. Um, I was about 15 feet from the meter when it started, but the closer I got to the meter, the more the symptoms happened. It took me about three hours to recover from being around that meter. And um, Brian was with me. He'll tell you that I had to leave the house from being around that meter. I didn't know anything about that meter. I didn't even know there was those kind of meters in Fairfield. I knew that they were scheduled to come under the Go Green program that were all supposed to be on wireless utility meters. But I didn't know that that meter was in Fairfield until my own physiology did that. So I went home, I Googled it, and I came up with a YouTube measurement of the meter saying that it was pulsing radiation every 10 to 12 seconds. And I wrote to Mayor Malloy, who wrote back and said, no, it isn't. It's only pulsing once a month. It sleeps the entire month. And I said, and I wrote back to him and I said, that meter's not sleeping, because I just got really sick from it. And Catherine. then Richard went over, Richard Wolfson here, who's a professor of physics at MUM, went over and <clears throat> measured the meter. And it was doing exactly what the YouTube showed. It was pulsing high bursts of radiation every 12 to 14 seconds. And that's why I got sick. So I don't travel with a doctor, but you said if there's someone who can prove that they got sick from that meter, that you'll take it out. And I have proof. Someone was with me, and okay. Sue Berkey saw it happen twice. Is that proof? Catherine, now just, just, just a minute. I'll just, yeah. again, that was not Michael Halley's statement. That was Carl Chandler's statement. Okay. And, I, I and mean, the thing is, I just, I just have to ask you something, because we have to move yeah. on. Are you for or against the, uh, the opt-out reading at this for, uh, today? Yeah, I'm totally for the opt-out reading. Okay, it's that's, just, may I qualify you. that? Okay. I'm for the opt-out. I just feel that it's like paying protection money to, you know, protection money, like don't hurt me in my home. Okay. I just feel like what we really have to look at is what do we want? Do we want to live with city representatives who want to enforce something in your home on you that is okay. absolutely unproven? Right. It is absolutely Catherine, and that, and that point is being made too. This is, <laughs> The, the, the governments, the governments okay, of the I'll people, the governments Cap of the people is for the welfare of the people, not for the welfare of corporations. You're finished. Okay, I'm going to take three more comments. This gentleman standing here, this gentleman here, and this gentleman here. Yes. My name is Bob Rabinow. I live at 1110 South 3rd. And I take care of a very dear friend who has MS, uh, wanted to be here tonight. Was at 1108 South Third, and fortunately, neither of us have these meters. 
I just checked mine and I've got this whole broken down here. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I understand that uh, if we want to opt out, then uh, there won't be there won't be this charge, which is good. Is that true? No. no. Is that true? Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. So the, the lady that I take care of has uh, MS, and she's paralyzed from the waist, uh, from the neck down. Uh, she has no cognitive problems. She's a wonderful lady, and but she has a very compromised nervous system. If this meter were to be installed in, in her house, uh, you know she's she's not in the middle of the bell curve. She's way out here on the bell curve in terms of sensitivity to, to these kind of radiations or to any environmental pollutants. We take very great care to shield her from environmental pollutants uh, because anything that you and I would slough off in a day can be fatal to us. So we absolutely can't have that kind of, this kind of a meter. Second, the second part of her situation is, of course, she can't work. And she's had this condition for 30, some 30 years. And so she, <coughs> she survives on the kidneys of public assistance. And she, can, you know, she can't afford this kind of, these kind of fees. So if, if the fees have to be charged, and I, and I would argue that, uh, that they really shouldn't be charged, but if the fees did have to be charged, then at the very least, there should be uh, consideration for people in her situation, the poor, the elderly, and the sick, and the whole and the lame. Okay. Thank That's you. number one. So now I want to follow up on uh, something Steve Joker said. <coughs> Basically, what there, there's certainly, there's, there's absolutely, I don't think anybody can, can deny in this room that there's controversy, that there's at least evidence that these meters are harmful. This is not junk science. This is real science. And uh, you know, Mr. Palmer wrote a letter which was uh, published on the internet. I'm sure you've, you've all seen it. Mr. Palmer uh, certainly has credentials. And I don't think uh, I don't think anyone in this room can can, uh, can refute. So so there's there's some danger. There's no benefit to us uh, if we get these meters. So they're just there's potential harm because apparently they're not calibrated very well, and I'll come back to that in a minute. But Bob, we're talking about this opt-out program tonight. We know that we know that long-term we want to address right. the, the okay. meters going forward. So, so what, just just really comments on this opt-out. Right. So what we're conducting now is an epidemiological experiment. We have 1,522 meters, and we're seeing with human subjects how many of them are going to get sick. And I'm doing it without informed consent, right. which means if we were in a university and we tried to do an experiment, I mean, to do an experiment like that with monkeys, it would like the ethics committee would throw it right out. So, uh, so that and that's I think I think that's a, a, an area of potential liability for the city. Okay. So, uh, so that's uh, that's that. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll close with uh, I'll close with one thing. There are three kinds of prohibition in Jewish law. There's prohibitions from the Bible, like you can't work on the Sabbath. There's prohibitions that the rabbis made that kind of keep you far away, like you can't write on the Sabbath by biblical law. You can't even pick up a pen on the Sabbath by rabbinic law. It's just so you don't accidentally write something. But there's a third kind of prohibition, and that's prohibition because of danger. For instance, it's forbidden to drink water that's been uh, left standing open uh, in, in your house. This is in a day, of course, when there were snakes and other kind of nasty things that would fall on the water. Those prohibitions, the prohibitions due to danger, are the most severe prohibitions. They're, they're severe, more severe than the prohibitions that God gave us at Mount Sinai. And here we have a situation where there's danger, and so really, we should take those prohibitions very seriously. Thank you very much. My name is Douglas Carpenter. I live at 2000 North Court, number 19E. I've written my remarks to keep them brief. Thank so you. Mr. Mayor and Assembly, 
Uh, thank you for this opportunity to speak here this evening on the proposed opt-out provision for the new Neptune e-meter brought by the City Council and currently being installed in all city homes and businesses. I have written this so as to save time. Uh, the City Council has purchased the Neptune meter without public input or public hearing and apparently made the purchasing decision without research into the effects of this meter on healthy individuals and its proximity, to say nothing of the meter's frequency and transmissions. The officials have expressed misinformation about the meter's frequency of transmission and its health effects in City Council and committee meetings. The City has not held any meetings in which to discuss the information they need to guide their decision to purchase these meters or any relevant research on effects to the public health. This misinformation in the case of the mayor was a result of input by the manufacturing representative who sold the city the Neptune meter. The city officers, um, officials, mayor and council have expressed reservations about the harm the Neptune meter will have on the public's health without any investigation into the meter's health effects, or if they have, without mentioning it, uh, such investigations. Rather than halt Neptune meter installations until the health effects can be clarified and a consensus can be reached without, um, about whether or not to continue installation, as Allian Energy has done so, the city has proposed an opt-out measure to appease the public who believe the meter to be a health hazard, add a punitive monthly installation costs, and um, to discourage further protests, uh, monthly and installation costs to discourage further protest, in the hopes that this will end these bothersome details and that the problem will go away. Forgive my presumptions. It is the implied objective of this city council to continue the installation of the meters in question, regardless of public opinion or evidence of harm to the public health. It is implied, uh, an implied objective of this council to ask those who object to the installation of these meters to pay for the replacement meter and labor in addition to the taxes paid to buy the Neptune meter and its installation, essentially, requiring those who object to these ins installations to pay for two meters and their installations when only one is necessary. <clears throat> the mayor and council has preferred the opt-out program to a reevaluation of a previous, a previous business decision made without proper consideration of public opinion to say nothing of the facts <clears throat> concerning the operation of the Neptune meter. I ask that the mayor and council dispense with all opt-out provisions and associated costs, halt all installation of Neptune meters, reevaluate the purchase of Neptune meter by exploring the health effects and costs uh, savings for Fairfield. Regardless of our belief, <coughs> religion, spiritual preferences, <coughs> health trumps all. Without our health, we can do nothing. A wise philosopher, Herbert Spencer, over a century ago said, there's a principle which is a bar, a bar against all information, which is proof against all arguments, and which cannot fail to keep a man in everlasting ignorance. That principle is contempt prior to investigation. I ask this mayor and council, I beg you to please set aside petty differences in politics and please reevaluate the health considerations surrounding the installation of this meter. In in any more of our homes in our city. Let us move forward on this issue of water meters, united in our resolve with, with one meter for all. <laughs> no, I'm just, this, this will be our last speaker, right. Is that regardless of what is decided with the fees, uh, or regardless of how long it takes to make that decision, uh, we would like the opt out option to be available as soon as possible. Uh, even if we have to pay for it, then maybe stop paying when if that decision is made. Um, some people, ourselves included, have an Neptune e coder installed already in very close proximity. We have a small house, and the meter is right in the middle of it. At times, we're only a few feet away. And um, that's my point. Great, thank you. All right, we'll, we'll close the public. We'll close the public hearing at this time and thank everyone for their comments. Richard, do you have anything new to offer to what's been said tonight? I mean, there's been really everything.
prepared like two. I, I, we've, we've heard all the scientific research. You've all got that, so I'm not going to repeat that. Okay. There's research indicating it could be hazardous. There's no research showing that it's safe. So there's a big controversy. And on the basis of that, I personally find it arrogant and irresponsible of city officials with no background to sort of go ahead and say these things are safe, to ignore the scientists from internationally who say it, you know, it could be unsafe. And these people are more knowledgeable. The city keeps referring to this California Council on Science and Technology report. It's been widely criticized by international experts as faulty, full of inaccuracies, and no scientific validity. I just said that the city, I, I guess on this last sentence, because he really, Doug Carpenter really set up well, but in one sentence, you know, the city is acting irresponsibly, mm -hmm. ignoring the advice of experts, risking the health of Fairfield citizens, Unless the city acts quickly to at least allow residents a zero cost up to opt out, the public is going to learn about this. This information, there's a group of people, we're, we're putting this information out, everyone's going to know about it, and it's going to be a big embarrassment to Fairfield when everyone finds out the city has acted this way. So we urge you to. Great, thank you very much. And those points have been made also. So we'll close the public hearing. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm going to start out disagreeing with Dr. Wilson because there have been there have been very few official statements made at all from the city. Um, we are we are basically in the process. I believe there have been two uh, meetings of your environmental and franchise committee. Three of those meetings they were public public meetings. Anything that was taken away from those are are basically public record. There has been one discussion prior to this evening about our policy and if you're listening you can see that everything is going in the direction of addressing the potential uh, the potential health risks of this and the concerns that people have so I don't I don't understand why you continue to to accuse the city of taking positions that are in, that are you know, directly in contrast to what the citizens want it's unfair and I'm not going to allow you to answer it Okay. Well, because there's there's enough there, there's really enough of this that goes on in between meetings that's taking place uh, on email and, and on a lot of pub and on a lot of informal discussions that are just not true. This is not the record of what the city is doing and discussing at this time. Okay. This is the process. This is the public hearing process, and this is information that's being taken in very very openly and very fairly, and is going to be deliberated by the city at this time. Nothing else has been officially stated at this time. This program, this program, actually, the, when we went back, and I was speaking with Carl about it today, uh, th this was uh, enacted by ordinance uh, some, somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 years ago, where this decision 20. was made. It was enacted in 1991. 1991. Okay, so this there isn't there isn't some conspiracy to quickly get some new technology and this was an evolution this was something that that was that that has been on the books and again what we're all learning about the technology is something that i think we we are going to go through as joseph boxerman said earlier we are going to learn this all as a community we are going to discover what the real threats are and what they aren't uh, and you know as well as i do that there are other experts in this field also that say that this particular uh, output of energy from this meter is not at the level discussed in a lot of the science and we're not going to just we're not going to talk about that now but the thing is we're, we're going to find out we're going to we're going to go through that process to determine what it is that uh, that that these meters actually are what they actually do and make a make a determination for the long term but these these public hearings and the outcomes of these are the official city position. Up until this point, there's been very little. So I wouldn't, you know, the, the comments that have been made tonight that, uh, that the city is in some way uh, intentionally using the population for experimentation is insulting. And I know that I that's agree. the assumption behind a lot of these things. So I'd entertain uh, comments from uh, the council now on the discussion we've had. And uh, if there is any intention to modify the ordinance as presented tonight or to table it? I'd like to. Could I just ask a No, you yeah. cannot. I'm no. sorry. The public hearing is over.
Thank I'd like you. to go ahead and move it forward as is and allow the next two weeks to have our new city administrator take a look at it, have Carl take one last look at it, and it's not going to get to zero, I can tell you that. It's political reality, financial reality. We can try to bring it closer to that, but I don't want to table it. I wanted to get it through. I didn't even know this had to be an ordinance when I first took action on this, which I took action on this weeks ago to give you guys an opt-out, and now I'm being criticized in emails as some sort of uh, opponent to this. It's, it's very unfair the way this is being handled, very not civil. I've been accused of a lot of things in the last few weeks that I've never heard in my life, and I don't want any more of it. So please stop with that side of it. We are moving this forward as fast as possible. We had an ordinance, we had a city law, excuse me, sir. We had a city law that said you had to have a wired meter, and now we are making an ordinance to it through the process of law. I was going to see if we can move it forward and finish it tonight, but then I know I'd be criticized for rushing it through without more public feedback. So I'm gonna say, let's just do the second reading tonight. We'll do the third in two weeks. And in the meantime, if anyone has any proposals about the opt-out program, please let us know. If you have any other opinions on the subject, I'm gonna ask you not to email me those. I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm full, okay? My inbox is full of this trash and I'm done. So okay. All right. when, you, well, when you receive stuff about your children well, getting stop sick. The that was stop installing the meter. Stop installing the meter. Sir, Sir I'm going. Stop installing the meter. They don't understand that you're with the people. Michael. So I'll we take have the motion other? from the second. Motion to pass from the second to the third reading. To the reading. third reading. Second. Second by Hamilton. Discussion. 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 You know, I w from the start, I really appreciated the idea of the opt-out, and I still do. I felt from the start, and I expressed when it first came up, I thought that $10 was not reasonable. Carl and I discussed it extensively today, and I know Carl's point of view is that there's some additional liability, there's some additional um, you know, trouble that the meter readers need to go through, and that it's moving in, in backward in our, in our progress as a, as a water department. And I, you know, I certainly see his point of view, but really I, I was, I'm kind of moved by a lot of the statements tonight and I, I'm feeling to offer a loan amendment here and I'm not sure how much support I'm gonna get for it because probably this is premature, but I support, I, I could see uh, paying the expense of the city of replacing the meter to the new one. I can see the expense of, uh, you know, the installation fee and the new meter charge but I, I feel it should be no monthly fee. And so I'm probably the only one on the council that feels that way right now, but um, I'm gonna offer that as an amendment. Okay, so we have, we'll take that, I will take that up then as the amendment, um, uh, as, a, as an amendment to uh, Michael's, Michael's amendment. Motion. So is right. there a second to John's uh, amendment, proposed amendment? I'll second that. Second by Boyer. Any discussion? If not, please call the roll. So, Council, you are voting right now on um, the amendment by uh, Councilman <coughs> Revelinski. Revelinski? Yes. Boyer? No. Hamas? No. Rasmussen? No. Hamilton? No. Halley? No. Oh. Silvers? No. Okay. So, motion fails uh, okay. six to one. Uh, then we'll continue with the proposal to move it from the second to the third reading by uh, uh, Halley and seconded by Hamilton. by Hamilton. Please call the roll. Halley? Yes. Hamilton? Yes. Boyer? No. Hamas? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Silvers? Yes. Revelinski? Yes. Okay, so the motion passes six to one, and that is from the uh, second to the third reading. There will be one more reading. Uh, in two weeks, and uh, Michael, is your co committee planning to meet again? We don't uh, have prior plans. to. Well, the next the next step is the wired option, and we have a really great lead now with Sioux Falls, Iowa. Sioux City. Sioux City. Sioux City. Sioux City. Sioux City, Iowa. It's in Iowa. It's a neighbor of ours. They have a a system where they plug <clears> it into the phone line. So most most houses have phone lines, so we don't need fiber optics. It's kind of an exciting idea, but I don't know. I don't know when it could be rolled out, but that's what we're exploring. So the opt-out is short-term solution. This is long-term solution. 
and so despite my personal feelings on the subject i have been trying to work this forward through my committee and i'm open to any suggestions and any any information i want this to be a public private partnership where those who are interested in this can do research and feed it to the city and we can come up with a really a really great solution so that's the second phase after this opt-out is to look at a wired option thank you but you will not be holding another meeting prior to discuss this this ordinance before it comes back uh, next in two weeks i haven't had any requests to do so okay. i'd be open to it i think uh your honor i think i would like to get with some folks and i think we're going to do a, a lot of work and a lot of discussion during this time and i just want to say to all the citizens here I have an open door policy i'm kind of all over the place right now but if i'm here and you want to have a word with me about this i'll be glad i'll be overjoyed to sit down with you and and talk about it i i you know open door policy we're partners in this uh, in no way does anyone from the city government want to harm any of our citizens on the contrary we want to do what's what's best for those citizens in both of our opinions okay thank May you I, yes can i provide just something sure sure so I just have one quick comment that I want to share with everyone, and it's basically just an observation. I've, I've sat here trying to be very balanced in listening to all of your comments and, and your, your questions and your concerns, and, and I get that. It's a personal preference for you, for you. The observation that I have is all of the meetings that we have, whether it's a committee meeting or a council meeting, are public meetings, and you, when topics like this or just normal city business comes up, I can probably count on two hands the times that the public come. And then it, it's only until it's something that you're really unsatisfied and it gets to a level where everybody's upset about it that you actually see somebody participate. So I would just encourage you to, you know, be observant, you know, connect with your council people about regular normal business as well. Don't wait till someone else brings up a, a topic and, and, and get on their, their topic of conversation. Make the decisions for yourself by being a, a, a good citizen and listening about what your city government is doing. That's just an observation, and I just thought I would share that with you. Thank you. Okay. Council, we'll move on now to um, our administrator and department uh, reports, and you have a copy of a project status report uh, regarding street construction projects, is uh, is Jerry Long or someone from uh, French Renneker here this evening? Okay. okay. Someone could uh, send Jerry in. Chief, would you go? Oh, I was just asking if you were going to actually. This is kind of under your your area, but I just want to call Jerry. No. Yeah, I'll we're still in session, please. Thank you. Stick around. Talk to all of you. You went a little too far. But he's been taking a lot, so. Is Jerry here? He's here. He's here. Probably can't get in there. <laughs> no, um, that's okay. He's coming. He's coming. And then I had one too much. I'm not going to be able to attend discussions this week. Options. Kind of good. I know. It's good. 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 It's good.
this point. Well, they can time for this as another She's time. Time. It is another no. one. I mean, I just, <laughs> you can't figure it out in two weeks. You don't, no, you can't. You don't want to compass the number that it would take to do it. But as far as the tech goes, I've seen it. It's not as efficient. I don't think it's as efficient as the radio is. Yeah. Okay, Council. I'm not. I'm not sure if uh, if Jerry is here. Yeah, Jerry. Yeah, Jerry. Oh, Jerry. <laughs> Jerry, come on. We're, we're we're waiting for you. We just um, we have your project status report. Thank you very much. It's it's uh, you know very conclusive. And um, is there anything in it that uh, that you wanted us to to be aware of um, in particular? Anything that needs our immediate attention? Um, I caught Kevin before the meeting and asked to speak with him tomorrow. Um, the little thing, it's, I mean, it's, it's not a big thing. It's probably not worth involving the council, but Second Street hasn't gone quite the way we wanted it to. The, uh, th we put the storm, the sanitary sewer in first down the middle. The soils were very, very bad. Basically, the street has ended up caving off from curb to curb uh, as we tried to put the sewer in. And so it's taking a little more rock to backfill the trench. Um, as we started compacting the trench, we had five water main breaks in one day. Wow. And um, wow. so we dug, dug all the way up the street and didn't have any water main breaks. But when we came back and started compacting, we had five breaks. So we've asked the contractor to move off of that street until the water main contractor gets the water main reconstructed and in the meantime, the contractor is moving over to South Main Street. So we're going to start that project. So that's a change from what was in here. That's my problem with this, is I write it one day, and it's changed a little bit the next. So I just kind of want to update the council. Um, the project, I think the water is going pretty good. Yeah. Just got started today. But um, we got a good contractor, and I think he's going to move on through that project. So really, that's probably the main thing that I wanted to tell you is that it's didn't go quite the way we wanted. Uh, Kirkwood, the contractors moved out there for your STP federal aid project. He'll, they're going to just jump back and forth between there and D Street. So he's going to start out there, get the storm sewer in, take the pavement out, and then the grading contractor will move over to D Street and start on the storm sewer and the pavement removal there. And in the meantime, the paving crew will move over to Kirkwood and start paving there. So uh, that project is underway. Jerry, uh, I had a question. I meant to ask you this last meeting. It's about the spillway project. OK. I was going to ask that. The, uh, <laughs> Thank the, you. And maybe it's a different question. Maybe it's the same question. <laughs> but the tube that was put in there, the big culvert, uh -huh. uh, is was an addition. And uh, I'm just curious, is that at the same level as the, as the spillway, or is it below the spillway? It's um, about. We haven't had enough rain to really yeah. test no, that, but I, I assumed it was some sort, of a, it's, it's some sort of an additional release valve. Carl might remember exactly, but I think it's 8 tenths of a foot below where the old spillway was. It's 8 tenths, OK. I think it, yeah. Visually, it looks a lot lower, lower yeah. but then again, that's because we haven't had any water, and you can't really tell <laughs> until it kind of gets gets up there. So, uh, the other part of that was that your question, Eric? No, mine oh. was actually about <laughs> pond number two, okay. spillway replacement. Um, has there been any uh, any further discussion with the Iowa Finance Authority since this was written up? Yes, um, Jeff. Oh, since this was written up, no, no, uh, and I wasn't expecting any. The person that we're dealing with has to go through the Iowa Finance Authority Board. Right. And they aren't meeting until sometime later this month. Okay, so and how so does that he, affect um, our letting that we did on May 28th? Didn't we uh, accept this oh, we accepted on May 28th? It. It, it didn't change anything as far as Walton is concerned. Mm -hmm. Either we'll get some more money or we won't. Okay. For the Walton spillway. Right, and that's pond number two spillway reconstruction or replacement no page one who's the one who's the one we've just pleasant finished. lake okay yeah, yeah that okay. one's done okay but we uh, we didn't use all of our i found that budget confusing in here and that's sorry why I wanted to get some clarification for it. did you have a have, have we done an estimate on the walton spillway 
No. Okay. Um, I don't, and maybe I should try to get Carl to come up, but uh, I, Carl has actually been out there, and I haven't seen it lately, Carl. He has done some repair work on the spillway, and I don't know if DNR is ready, is saying, okay, it's okay now. Can, well, I haven't, I'm uh, sorry. Just, just had our dams inspected. The inspector was down here a week and a half ago, I think it was approximately. Okay. Uh, so I haven't got the results back on that. We did have a, a, a leak that was running, more water coming out the bottom of the spillway. We got that found, remedied. Uh, we do know that there was some boys underneath the deck and the one wall leaning in. We thought we'd dug along that side uh, time and allow, of course, we'll try to pull that back up, straighten it up. Uh, put some fill under the deck somehow through a full mortar, and we think that might be such a thing we can, you know, accomplish most of this work ourselves. Okay, thank you. So, if Iowa Finance Authority comes through with some more money, we're going to be faced with the same kind of decision we had on the pond number two spillway. Do we do we do it ourselves and and get it put back together? with all the things we can find, or do we take their money and and let a contract probably tear a little bit of the floor out so we can see where the voids are and, and things like that. So there is maybe one more decision to make after we see if we get the money. If we don't get the money, we about have to do it the way Carl's doing it, is with his forces and 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 patching it back together fixing it back up. Okay. Thanks, Sherry. I, I have just another question. Sure. Okay, John. Um, just any more details you can offer about the quiet zone permits? Then what we see are just a little sketchy, but if you can fill in, in a little more on that. Um, Michael has been a lifesaver for the city and me. Um, his tenacity has got them off of dead center. Good. Um, we have learned that um, the city of Fairfield does not have to get a permit. The only permit we actually have to get now is through um, the contractor. That contract permit has been applied for. In order to get that permit approved, they have to have a certificate of insurance that they have railroad protective insurance. Mm -hmm. The railroad protective insurance has been acquired by Drish, but their secretary sent it to the wrong place. Uh, there's a there's a little tiny words in there that says it should be sent to a place called Cert Focus, and it didn't go there. Did she save it, a copy so she can send it to? The yep, place? it got yeah. sent on Friday. It got sent Friday. Just the human so error. everything we think is. So we're really close to getting started. We're really close. I feel, Michael. Yeah. I feel like we're really close. Like, like I mean, are they? Like we thought we might get it today, that we're, close. We're hoping so, I mean, how, how? I know that we had in there that it has to be done by what August thirty first, and so is that realistic? I mean, is I mean, is it? In other words, are they ready to get started as soon as they have this permit? Yes, Drish is anxious to start on the project. Great. Yeah. Nice job, Michael. Thanks, Michael. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Michael. Yeah. Did something right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. He deserves Thank you, Jerry. Appreciate it. Uh, Your Honor, I'd just like to say yes. that uh, I was given an update, a comprehensive update of a lot of uh, the city, well, all of the city's ongoing projects by our, by our city engineer, and I found that to be very helpful, and uh, it was comprehensive, and it was a little longer <laughs> than I thought it was going to be when I first started reading it. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, three hours later, I... Uh, <laughs> I, I really appreciate that, and then we're going to be getting together to do uh, uh, quite a tour here over the next week or so, and, and looking forward to that. Good. Great. Thank you. Okay, Council, we'll move on to uh, committee reports, uh, environmental franchise utility. So yes, that was the meeting where we talked about um, a wired option, and the first proposal that John Brown and uh, Robert Palma had brought was to get an interface with the uh, radio, readomatic readers, which is what the opt-out will be. And we suggested instead of trying to interface that, because that's not necessarily the meter we're moving forward with, they could find some sort of meter that would interface or uh, 
a meter that had the ports necessary to put it to the phone line. So today, to find out that Sioux Falls or Sioux City has that was a real step in the right direction. So we asked them if they could find a city that had it, talk to those people, get information. So it's kind of a public-private partnership where the citizens interested in this will do the legwork and not expect that Carl will do it since he's got a huge department to run. So let him do his job. And they can do the legwork on getting the information and then feed it uh, through the committee to Carl, to Kevin, to everyone to really take a look at can we move in that direction long term. And I think the phone line thing was our recommendation rather than fiber because more homes in Fairfield have a phone line than would have fiber optic. So we left it that it's an ongoing process, more research is needed, and uh, we'll continue to work on that. I'm hoping to speak with some of the city officials there over the next couple of days. That'd be great. Thank you, Michael. Um, any other any comments or questions? If not, uh, that'll bring us to our adjournment and entertain a motion to um, go ahead, guys. Well, I was just going to ask Michael if if you could stomach one more meeting regarding this ordinance. I think it would be worthwhile just to specifically talk about the fees, no fees versus fees. And you know, as much as you can, keep it to only that topic. I think it's a good I, idea of having, in, in fact, to. that you ha didn't get a chance to discuss it at the last meeting. No, I, I that, so. I, that's yeah. exactly what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the program. And you know, give everybody a week, week and a half to let it settle in. What's happened here tonight? And um, you know, I mean, the thing that's even going through my mind is constitutionality of the fees. You know. Is it okay? I mean, we're having a big debate about health care costs, so maybe mm -hmm. it comes under that, and that's something we need to really ponder and um, think about. That's any all. cost that's going to be put forward as part of a city doing any activity like that has to have a rational basis. I mean, basically, it has to have a rational basis, and so I mean, I'm, we're going to we're going to look at that, and we're going to talk about it, and qualify these costs, and what exactly the costs are going to be. And I think that's a great idea to have that meeting. Yeah, and I'm and glad to have Kevin looking at it too. Just okay. one, if I may, one piece of input for this as well, because I probably won't be able to attend your meeting. But, um, and Carl and I discussed this today. Is, and, and of course, Carl's point of view that he, that he mentioned to me and probably everyone is, well, you know, there's extra risk and there's, you know, extra, you know, workman's comp claims that would come from over time from having to go up to someone's house versus not having to go up to their house. And I said, well, let's at least look at our workman's comp claims over the past so many 20 years if we can and see well, how much were they and you know somewhat prorated it and see if it really justifies um you know if 10 percent of the people if 10 percent of our households opt out of this program uh you know the amount that ten dollars a month of you know you know is that really in line with with that cost and then if if, if it's that's not the only cost then what is the other cost you know there's this kind of soft cost of where we're going backwards, but maybe we can go forward with a different technology or something. I can, anyway, uh, I can like produce to a graph that would show our, the history of our mod, you know, look yeah. at our workers comp mod and see where we've been, where we're, where we're kind of going on a trend level with it. Yeah, I mean, and if we can justify like that, then I, I'm, I'm behind it. I, you know, I, I think that's reasonable. But uh, as long as, but, but, and then we keep working on this other model to yeah, uh, other technology you know, to really get it's, out of it. It's pretty clear that the, you know, the, the technology and the science behind it are going to continue to be controversial because, you know, the, the, the really, the, the health analysis and those effects are not likely to come out in a definitive fashion anytime soon. Um, you know, because of the nature of the technology. But if there, if there is any doubt, uh, then we should pursue uh, something that uh, isn't going to draw that kind of attention of being controversial. So anything that we can do long term in this, since there is going to naturally be a turnover period with meters anyway, uh, it for the long term is something that we should just uh, make ourselves uh, aware of and, um, and, and potentially if the economics are there, imp implement, implement them in a way that takes that risk out of play. Yeah, I see the wired option really is the ultimate win because no, no reader has to show up, not even drive by in a truck. It's super green. I mean, the, the idea that this, uh, the wired meters were part of the grid green plan isn't accurate. It's not in there. It was yeah. something else. But it is greener in, in the terms of <coughs> less emissions. And then there's no wireless option. So if we can afford it, 
Yeah. Well, I, I would really encourage Carl to at least not jump on spending that $50,000 that's in our budget for next year on these uh, Neptune meters until we do this analysis. Because if we find that maybe there's another option that would sort of serve our needs as well as uh, eliminating some of the controversy here, that would be useful before we jump on, you know, 50 grand more of, because I know that's about how much we put in there in the budget. So uh, I would just encur encourage you to just hold on as long as you can before we make sure that we want to go that way. If you don't, if, Your Honor, if you don't mind me saying, for this many people to show up and be this interested in anything that is going on in the city for my first council meeting is a little bit refreshing, in a way. It's not used to being called, you know, the Nazi kind of thing, but, but it's, it's refreshing, and I'll tell you this, going forward, nothing of this similar nature will happen again as far as our rollout of things, because I think we all kind of got taken off guard because this is accept, greatly accepted technology, let's just, I mean, you know, on a factual level. So I think maybe we got a little caught off guard. That that certainly won't happen again. But but this is refreshing that we're all going to go forward in, in such an involved way. Okay. Thank you for those comments, and Carl, thank you for your cooperation with everything too. And uh, we'll continue to support you and what you're doing at the Water Department. Entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Moved by Hamilton, second by Silver. As all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign.